Today, I received a good question from Antoinette Naranjo. This person was asking about how to validate a phone number so that it fits a particular format, whether it's parentheses, hyphens, or with letters. In this tutorial, I'll be showing you how I would go about this problem. This is Mr. Dang. Let's first set things up. I'm going to be selecting one of the common data service entities that includes a phone number. I'll go ahead and do a search for contact. I'll use the contact entity. And I'll create a simple three screen app based on that data. My strategy for this is actually not to give the user a warning that they need to type a certain way. Instead, we're going to be doing the formatting for them. This makes the user experience much smoother. So even if they type in any symbols, our solution is going to replace them with the right symbols. This particular entity in the common data service uses hyphens and not the parentheses. We'll go ahead and set up a solution for that, and I'll show you how you could change it to any format that you would like. Here, I've navigated to the screen where we have our form. The card that I've selected is going to be sending whatever phone number is typed in. Let's go ahead and unlock it so we can edit each of the items inside. For our particular solution, we're actually not going to be having anybody type anything in there. We're going to have it automatically detect what's typed in to another text input box. Let's go ahead and add that now. I click Insert, Text, Text Input. Let's go ahead and drag it to the end and just bring it to the middle so that I can still see the original. Let's clear whatever's typed in there. And for the hint text, we'll encourage the person to type in the correct format, but it doesn't matter since we're going to be doing it for them anyway. I'll go ahead and type in a phone number just so that we could test things out. If you can guess where it's from in pop culture, send me a tweet at 8-Bit Classroom. In the original text input box, I'll be configuring its default property. This is what's going to be saved to the data source. I'll start by showing what's already inside the text input field that we just added. Now, let's go ahead and make this formula more interesting. The split function will take a string of text and it'll split up all the characters into its own row. So six is in its own row, three is in its own row. I'll concatenate that so that it becomes text again so essentially, at this point, I haven't really changed anything. Let's see what happens if I add hyphens to whatever the user types in. So this makes sense. It's still copying everything over. Let's run another test where I type in parentheses instead. This also makes sense. It's keeping everything the way that it's typed. What I actually want is just the numbers. So I'm going to use the filter function. Each of the characters, if it is inside 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9, in other words, if it's a number, keep it, and then concatenate that. So all you're left with is just the numbers. Let's take the left three. So that's the first three digits. I'll concatenate more. I'll use a hyphen. I'll take the same string. This time, I'll start at the middle, starting at digit four, getting three more digits. I'll add another hyphen. Then I get the last part. I'll use the mid function again, start at digit seven, and take four digits. So I correctly formatted it the way I wanted, two hyphens. If you wanted parentheses, you could start a parenthesis at the top, change that first hyphen to an end parenthesis, add a space. If you'd like a space around the other hyphen, go ahead and put that in. It's almost ready. Let's go ahead and stretch this all the way across so that it hides the formatted phone. What I'd like to do next is give the user some feedback. Did they type things in correctly? I'll do this by adding a check icon. Let's move that to the end. 
Let's make it green. Home. Change its color. Next, I'll change its visible property. I only want it shown if the user has typed in exactly 10 digits. So we're going to need to use that split formula we had before. I'll paste it in. Around that, I'll use count rows. I'll replace concat, since I don't need to concatenate them anymore. Split is actually a table, so I can count it up. I'll finish the condition with equals 10. If it counts it up and there are 10, the check mark will show up. Let's test it out. I'll add a digit. It's gone. Erase it. It's back. Erase another. It's gone. So only when it's 10, it appears. From here, you can prevent users from clicking the check mark at the top of the screen unless the phone number is validated. And that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more interesting Power Apps, please subscribe.